Today we're taking a look at the RX-7 Ultra from Hoyt. Welcome back to Mike's Archery's YouTube and today we are taking a look at the 2022 lineup from Hoyt and we are looking at the new RX-7 Ultra their new redesigned carbon riser for this year. Now what we notice is they have completely redesigned the RX-7. So if you like that RX-5 from last year, this is a complete redesign of the riser, the cams from the ground up. There's nothing the same on this bow, including the accessories that they've done for this year. They did a revamp of the connection in that inline system. So completely from the ground up, a whole new bow. Now let's look at the specs of the new Hoyt RX-7 Ultra. The speed rating on this bow is coming in at 334 feet per second. The axle to axle on this bow is a 34 inch. So it's the longer platform giving you that more of a target or if you're a Western guy that likes that longer to axle to axle or you're a bigger guy, you need that longer axle to axle, this is it. You get that full 34 inch axle to axle. Now that does create a longer cam to cam length. So you're a full 39 inches from cam to cam. So if you're looking for a case for this bow, you're going to want to look at a little longer case to make sure everything's going to fit in there. Now the brace height on this bow is coming in at seven inches and we have been throwing in that reflex measurement, which is a little shorter because of that extra high brace height. It's only four inches. So given a real forgiving platform and with that high brace height, you're going to see lower torque through your shots and just a more forgiving shot out of this bow. Now the factory spec weight on this bow, and this is something from last year that we knocked Hoyt on, those carbon riser bows were heavy. They have with this new riser lightened that up a little bit and the factory spec weight is 4.3 pounds. Now we did throw it on the scale and with that stubby stabilizer and all the dampening stuff that comes on it from the factory, it's still coming in and out of the box weight at five full pounds, which I think is pretty much spot on what it was last year, but they did lighten up the riser a little bit, but you're still seeing it with all the extra goodies that are on there coming in and out of the box weight of five pounds. Now we pulled those dampeners and that stubby stabilizer off there and we got it down to 4.6 pounds. Now that's still about three tenths of a pound heavier than what the factory spec weight is, but it is coming in a little lighter than last year, but not a lot. So again, if you're still looking at a carbon riser bow to be really lightweight for the, shaving those ounces for a mountain hunt or whatever, it's probably still not going to meet those requirements of being an exceptionally light bow. But if you're going to put sidebars on it and weight it back up with stabilizers and all your gear and you know big heavy sights with a lot of micro drive in it it's probably not going to matter you're going to get the cool factor of a carbon the warm touch of the carbon the feel of a carbon overall it's still going to be a great bow for you it's just going to be heavier and probably come in weighing about the same as an aluminum riser bow does now the draw length spec when you go to the 34 inch ultra gives you a little longer draw length. So if you're that guy that's needing that extra inch or two, getting it out there to that 32 inch mark, this bow is gonna do it. Now on the short end, you can get the cams down to a 27 inch on the short end. It's more focused to that extra little longer draw length. So if you're needing that shorter 26, 26 and a half, something like that, you're not gonna be able to get it on an ultra. You're gonna to wanna to step back to one of the other models uh, that has a shorter bottom end on it. But overall, it gives a wide spread to fit most guys in the market. Now, they do give a wide spread of weight ranges on this bow, going from 40 to 80 pounds, which is pretty standard for Hoyt, and you can order this bow in every 10 pound increment, from the low end of 40 all the way out to that higher end of 80 pounds, which we're seeing more and more these days with these smoother draw curves. Guys are wanting a little more weight, and they're able to pull it, so you can get this bow in an 80 pound model. Now, they did a complete redesign on the cams so it is the new hbx pro cam and with that they kept still the 80 to 85 percent let off option but it got new redesigned cams with new redesigned modules so you're not going to be able to use last year's module but it uses the same premise as it did last year instead of changing the base cam you're changing the base module the cams stay the same you can get your number two or number three base module and go that full draw length spread on the same cam just by doing a module swap and rotating that module throughout the draw cycle. Now they are claiming this redesign on this cam is smoother and just as much stealth and speed as they've ever had and quieter. Now what we did after talking to some of the engineers there at Hoyt, they have told us on the draw curve when you run this through the computer specs, the draw curve on this bow is exactly the same as the RX-5 was last year on the HBX cam. Now that's good news because when we heard that Hoyt had redesigned their cam, we were a little concerned because usually you're gonna lose something that they got right in the past. 
It's not the case this year. Even though they redesigned this can, they kept the same great feel, the same great smoothness through that draw cycle, and still great feel in the shot out of this can. So like I said, we were a little concerned, but Hoyt nailed it and kept all those great features that we love that they changed last year going forward in this new model. Now, a couple of the changes that they did make for this year, one of the first things we noticed was the Picatinny rail system. Now they had that inline Picatinny rail system. It came as an extra add-on piece with the carbon riser last year that you had to change out some parts to get that on the front. It's fully integrated into the riser now and it looks much better, fits a whole lot better. Still gonna give you the same option to use those Picatinny rail sites that were come up with last year from several different manufacturers, but it does look sleeker and looks better on the riser for this year. Some of the other features that they did keep was the integrated rest mount. That did not change from the past, so you're still gonna be able to get that QAD, integrated Hoyt rest to mount in there, keeping everything in line, sleeker and tighter, and mounted solid. We do hear that there's gonna be several other rest options for you coming this year from a few other manufacturers such as Hamsky and Ripcord, some other people coming with some of that integrated mount rest. So you may have some options to be able to change going into this year and not necessarily have to use the QAD option. One of the other things they kept was the standard lower stubby stabilizer hole. Obviously that is giving a better feel and taking more shock out of the riser placed right there above the limb pockets. And it's something they're going forward with on all their models and they did keep your standard stabilizer hole up high and you can still mount that SL side bracket that they came with last year, allowing you to get that back bar if that's something that you want. Now, one of the things they did completely redesign was the quiver mounting system. They brought a more inline system of their quivers, giving you three options there. You've got a long style like we have mounted on this Ultra, looking somewhat like a tight spot, being able to bring that in tighter to the riser of the bow, giving better balance. They also kept a shorty version of that, being able to mount on these same new redesigned post, bringing it in tighter to the bow, as well as a two-piece option that they've had for the last several years. If you're the guy that never takes it off and you just want that two-piece option, you're going to be able to mount that top and bottom as probably the lightest version of their quiver if you're trying to shave a few ounces going to that two-piece, doing away with some extra pieces on those quivers. One of the other things we noticed that they redesigned for this year is the new Vital Point Grip. And it was something as soon as we picked up the new Hoyts felt great in our hand and we liked the redesign. It's got a little less angle in the handle, still a great slim feel in your hand, has a rubberized coated grip over top of it with a little cutout in the side for your fingers to rest in. So you're getting a really great feeling grip that's gonna to be torque free. And just from what we noticed, it really feels good in the hand. I think it's something that if you're looking at a new bow, you need to check out a Hoyt pick it up and see if that bow doesn't fit really well in your hand and just sit extremely well with this redesigned grip. Some of the other features that have stayed similar for this year, their single string stop is still mounted in there on the riser. Their roller guard system has been moved a little bit and redesigned, but keeping the same principle, allowing no chatter and a nice smooth through the draw feel. Some of the other things that they did change was one of the riser dampeners. They've now put double riser dampeners top and bottom on that front outside edge of the riser. It's obviously taking some vibration, keeping quietness to this bow and a great dead shot feel in your hand. Now the colors of this bow, if it's something you're wanting to customize, Hoyt gives a large color palette that you can choose from to customize this bow any way you like. They keep with three solid color options and these have been there for several years. It's not really any change in the color options that they've had in the past. You can still get this bow in a buckskin, the wilderness green or a solid black and you've got four camo options coming in with the standard Realtree Edge, a QU Verde 2, Subalpine, or Elevated 2. And then they've got three options in a special makeup. You wanna pick up that Keep Hammering Cameron Haynes option in black, or they've got two options in a Bone Collector version that you can get in black or in Realtree Edge with the Bone Collector logos. So it gives this bow several options to customize it in any color to give it any look that you want. Now Hoyt did keep at the upper end and carbons have always been expensive. And it seems this year some price increases from everybody. Carbon bows have taken a little bit of a jump and you're gonna see these bows at $1,800 MAP retail. That's pretty in line with what we're seeing from some of the other carbon manufacturers. And I'm sure you're gonna see some other price increases Hoyt did take most of those in the middle of the year last year, so it's kind of leveled out at this point. We're hoping not to see any more going forward, but it does make it a premium top-end bow, and you're going to spend the extra money to get a carbon riser from Hoyt. So we're going to step over to the lane. We're going to take some shots out of this bow. We are going to be shooting this bow on a little different configuration because our sample bows came in on a 65-pound top-end. 
So rather than shooting this bow on 70, we will be shooting it at 65 with a 29 inch draw length, the 85% let off, and we're gonna go through several grain options on your arrows. We will be shooting that 400 grain, but we're gonna give you the speed options all the way from 350 out to 500 so you can get a good idea of where this bow is gonna perform depending on the weight arrow that you get a setup on. So we stepped over here to the lane uh, with the RX-7 Ultra. We're gonna take a few shots out of this bow, give you a breakdown of where the speeds, noise rating, as well as feel of this bow is at. Uh, as always, we are gonna be shooting this bow with a 400 grain arrow. Now this one is a little different. We're shooting it with 65 pound max because that's what our samples came in as rather than 70. So the number is gonna be a little bit slower, not tremendously, but just keep that in mind that uh, you should see five or 10 more feet if you bump the poundage up on these things. And then we're also gonna be shooting a 350, a 450, and a 500 grain arrow, giving you the speed specs on all those while we're over here and uh, shooting on 85% let off at 29 inch draw. So. Let's give you a rundown and take a few shots here. All right, so speed rating on that bow with a 400 grain error came in at 281. And just to give you a breakdown with the other errors that we've been shooting, backing it down to a 350 grain arrow, we got 297. And then with a 450 grain arrow, it went down to 267. And with a 500 grain arrow, it dropped all the way down to 252 feet per second. So overall, it's a little slower than we thought we would see, but part of that is that 65 pound rating. Um, I don't think if you bumped it up, you're probably not gonna break 290s maybe. Uh, if you bump that up to 70, uh, 70 pounds, you know, it's probably a little slower than we expected, but overall it's a longer bow, a more forgiving bow. You're not necessarily shooting this bow for speed with that 334 feet per second IBO rating. But overall, pretty decent speeds, just nothing blistering. Now, as far as the noise rating on that bow, uh, it came in at 97.7 decibels. So right there, kind of in the middle with what we're seeing for most everybody's bows. Definitely not the loudest bow, certainly not the quietest, but you can tell it's just right there in the mix and just a decently quiet bow when you shoot it. Now, after that, the shot on this bow, again, we mentioned earlier the grip and how much we like that. The feel of this grip in your hand, and then when you get to full draw, it just sits really well, has a great feel on the hand. After that, the draw cycle, as we mentioned, according to Hoyt, identical to last year's numbers. I really can't tell any difference, so I would agree with that. It's definitely very, very similar to what we saw last year with an extremely smooth draw cycle, a great feeling draw cycle, doesn't drop off at the back end, quite solid being a cable stop system with that adjustable let off. Uh, it feels really good dropping in there and good and solid on the back while you're gonna be able to pull into that bow, not feeling any sponginess uh, to speak of with this new uh, Ultra. And overall, the dead feel in the hand, they nailed it again with that for this year. It's got a great feel after the shot, very dead in the hand. Uh, it doesn't have that thud like we've had. Uh, if you've shot a lot of carbon riser bows, it has a little different vibration than an aluminum bow typically does. I noticed that less with this RX-7 uh, in the Ultra and the regular. That carbon feel of this riser is really more like an aluminum bow than it has been in the past. Very dead in the hand, doesn't have any jump to it. Uh, just overall a great feeling bow. So Hoyt has done a great job redesigning these carbon bows for this year. And if it's something you've been looking at and thinking about, Give us a call here at Mike's Archery and we will get you set up with one of the new RX-7s.